Good morning and welcome to St. Columbus Church. I'm Father Greg Larkin and we're glad to have you with us this morning. We're recording our service today on a very blustery day, so we hope that you will bear with us as we work our way through the service with the wind howling outside. A couple of brief announcements. The book group is continuing with Bishop Michael Curry's book, Love is the Way, on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. and Thursday mornings at 10. If you'd like to join us, please get a copy of the book and let the office know which group you'd like to be a part of. Our annual meeting will be next Sunday, January 31st at noon via Zoom. So we need to have as many people as possible be a part of the Zoom so that we have the necessary quorum to conduct the business of the meeting. We will be electing vestry members. We will hear about the budget that the vestry will have adopted and other issues that come before us. So please watch for the Zoom information coming in the mail or by email. Also, you'll be able to call in by phone if you're unable to come by computer. So we would like to have as many people as possible join us to be a distant celebration of our life together. And now our service begins with our opening hymn, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. Jesus calls us or the tumult of our lives wild restless sea. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together, Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the prophet Jonah. When the prophet Jonah finally preaches repentance to the Ninevites, they heed his words and turn from their wicked ways, causing God to forgive them and not bring calamity upon them. Listen now for the word of God. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message I will tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 62. Please read together with me. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, Truly my, my hope, hope is in, is him. in him. He alone, he alone is, is my rock and my and salvation. My salvation my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the, On the scales, scales they, are they are lighter, lighter than, than a breath, breath. All, all of them, them together. Put no, put no trust, trust in extortion. In robbery, in robbery take, take no empty no pride. pride. Though, Though wealth increase, increase set, set not, not your, your heart, heart upon it. it. God, God has, has spoken, spoken once, once twice, twice have, have I heard it. it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast, Steadfast love, love is yours, is yours O Lord. Lord. For you, you repay, repay everyone, everyone according, according to his deeds. Our second lesson is from the first letter to the Corinthians. The Apostle Paul urges the Corinthians to make the salvation of their companions the priority, setting aside their own quibbles and emotions. Listen now for the word of God. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you ever wonder what it might have been like watching the evening news in Jesus' day? A new prophet has begun his ministry on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. We switch you now to our correspondent, Nathan of Bethsaida, with this live news chariot update. Wouldn't it have been great if that's the way they covered Jesus when his ministry began? But they didn't. There were no photographers taking before and after shots as Jesus did his miracles. There were no tape recorders to take down his teaching and preaching. There was no eyewitness news van around to record his every move. So as Mark begins his account of Jesus' life and teaching, he does so by describing a typical day in the life of Jesus, made up of a little of everything Jesus did, preaching, healing, and calling followers. Our gospel today gives us one of those typical days as Jesus begins his ministry and calls his first disciples. The first 13 verses of the gospel, remember we're still in chapter one, have prepared us for this critical moment of the arrival of the kingdom of God. In the opening verses of Mark, Isaiah announces the coming of God's messenger, and John appears in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance. John then announced the coming of a mightier one who would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Jesus then came from Galilee to be baptized and received God's spirit as the heavenly voice announced to him, you are my son with whom I love, with you I am well pleased. After spending 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, Jesus now comes back into Galilee after the arrest of John and begins to proclaim the gospel of God. The time is fulfilled, he says, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For Jesus, the response to the kingdom of God is repentance. But just what is meant by this rather broad word? 
The word Jesus used, translated from the Greek word metanoia, means much more than to be sorry for one's sins. It means to turn around 180 degrees. It is a deliberate turning away from one's sinful past and reorienting one's whole self towards God. And the living out of this return to God is belief in the good news of God. This belief, however, is not simply an intellectual agreement to a set of principles by the brain, nor is it an emotional reaction of the heart. It is a total response of the whole person to the message of the gospel. To believe in the good news is to have faith in what God has done in the past and in what God now promises to do. One way to look at Mark is that the rest of the gospel is an expansion of these two verses, explaining what it means to repent and believe in the gospel. And the first illustration of what this means is the call of the first disciples. <clears throat> now, just who were these disciples Jesus called? Well, we know their names, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. We know what they did for a living. They were fishermen. We know that two of them still worked with their father. But what else do we know? Let's dig a little deeper and see what else we can find. They were simple folks, fishermen from Galilee. They weren't from Jerusalem or Rome. They weren't from the best families or the best schools. They weren't captains of industry or venture capitalists. They had no money, no power, and no way could they help to finance or support this operation. They were fishermen. They were plain, ordinary working folks doing their regular daily work, catching fish and mending nets. And Jesus comes to them and calls them. He says, follow me. He doesn't say, I have a theological system which I would like you to investigate. Or, I have certain theories I would like you to think over. Or, I have an ethical system I would like to discuss with you. He simply said, follow me. And immediately they did. He called them from their regular everyday life to a life of service, to a life of helping others to learn about the love of God and to live out that love. In other words, he called them to do ministry. And Jesus issues this same call to us. We too are called to repent and believe in the gospel. We too are called to turn our lives around and redirect them towards God and God's love. We too are to live out the love of God in our lives and share it with those around us. In other words, we too are to follow Jesus. We need to give up our self-prioritized ways and do the things that God would have us do. When Jesus called his first disciples, he gave them a task to do. He called them to a life of service, of ministry, and we too are given this same call a call to a life of service in him. Yes, 
We know we have been called, but we also struggle with what this means. We look up to the heavens and ask, God, what are you really calling me to do with my life? And we can feel so overwhelmed that we can be paralyzed by the enormity of the task. But in the gospel, Jesus says we are to fish for people. It's as simple as that. But how can we fish for people in a time of COVID? It's as simple as picking up the phone. Just pick up the phone and let your fingers do the walking. Call a friend from church or call someone you miss. Call them and check up on them. Call them and let them know that someone cares about them. One of the greatest difficulties in this time of pandemic is isolation and loneliness. And your simple phone call can go a long way to help with that. Take a moment to think. Who is it that you would like to talk with right now and then call them? Preferably after the service is over, but hey, if you need to, put us on pause and go ahead. But just this once. As the old AT&T jingle used to say, reach out, reach out and touch someone. Reach out, call up and just say hi. Just doing that is sharing the good news of God. So call someone and let them know that they are loved and then do it again and again. I end today with the words of one of my favorite hymns by John Bell. And I hope that soon and very soon we will be able to sing it together. But in the meantime, I invite you to listen to these words. Let them flow through your head and your heart, that you may hear God's continuing call to you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Christ, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Amen.
Now let us affirm our faith with the creed in the words of the Iona community. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended to the earth, to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. As God is moved by the sincerity of our repentance, so too God is pleased by the faithfulness of our prayers. Let us offer our prayers to God saying, in your mercy, hear us, Lord. You have called us, O God, to follow you. Give us the grace to listen to your call, to lay aside the things of this world, and to follow you. In your mercy, Hear us, Lord. You have sent us, O God, into the world to tell the story of your love and faithfulness. Give us a holy zeal for the proclamation of the gospel in this place and in all the world. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You have called, O God, persons of varieties of gifts to serve your church. Bless, we pray, the ministries of musicians and artists, scholars and writers, pastors and teachers, that their work enrich our common life and offer us a glimpse of the life to come. In your mercy, hear, hear us, us Lord. Lord. You gave life, O oh God, for us and for all people. We remember before you those who are sick, those who mourn, and those who rejoice. As you have reached out to us in love, so inspire us to be present to those we have named before you. In your mercy, hear, hear us, us, Lord. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for our bishops, Justin, Michael, John, and Diane. For St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, and our clergy and staff. We pray for those with immediate needs, especially for Sarah, Dominic, Timmy, Sandy, Denise, Lynn, Ron, Therese, Dana, Carrie, Robbie, Wendy, Carol, Michelle, Guy, Rob, Bill, Richard, Donna, Dick, Amy, Ted, Vicki, Judy, Ron, Lisa, Mary, Linda, Linda, Savannah, Araceli, Augustine, Lauren, Mona, John, Elise, Stephen, Terry, Val, Joyce, Ronald, Clark, Danny, Richard, Aaron, and Ken, and those who need our continuing prayers who are named in the bulletin and in our hearts. We give thanks for all members of our St. Columbus Parish family, and we pray for the time when we may worship in person together again. We pray for the world, for all who are suffering or who have died because of the coronavirus pandemic, for all victims of violence, and to turn the hearts of those who would do harm, for those affected by natural disasters, especially wildfires, for peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world, for all those serving at home and abroad, for Liam, Simon, 
Ed, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, David, Noah, Garrett, DeLondon, and Marty. Please add your own prayers silently or aloud in full confidence that God will hear and respond. As we are faithful in prayer, O oh God, so much make us faithful in following you, that loving and serving you all the days of our lives, we may know the joy of the resurrection and may look with longing for your coming in power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet those you love. Our service continues with the Eucharistic prayer as found printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and prayers. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. 
but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself. Yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Mary, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Columba, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us now pray together the prayer of spiritual communion from the Armed Forces Prayer Book. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, You Walk Along Our Shoreline.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the light of the world. Thanks be to God.